welcome to another episode. I haven't made one in a couple of weeks, but um, I've been busy doing a lot of fishing recently. So um, it's getting cold now. It's like November, mid-November in the UK. And uh, if you've got a workshop, like I have, um, I'll put a link above to uh, how I built my workshop, which is this one. Um, if you've got a workshop like I have, you're probably thinking, how am I gonna work in there in the winter when it's really cold? I mean, I've got my hat on because I've just come in here. Um, let me just turn the lights on, show you. Right, so, I've uh, started off by insulating the walls. So first of all, we've got a wrap which goes around the whole building. Um, it's this here. So above there is the roof. Um, that is a thermal wrap, which is, um, it's got three layers to it. It's got a thermal layer, um, a waterproof layer, and like a breathable layer. Um, that's called Chromar number three, I think, something like that. But you can get all different ones. So the whole building has been wrapped, and then uh, on the roof and on around the walls, I've taped it up with aluminium tape to tape up the seams so that the air doesn't get in. So that's another thing. So um, um, I've used the wrap and the aluminium tape, and then I've gone on. So I've been, this took me a while. Um, I haven't finished yet, but I've gone on to the walls are finished. I've used, I'll show you what I've used actually. I'm using this kind of stuff, right? So this, this is um, aluminium bubble wrap. So it's basically bubble wrap. But it's got aluminium on both sides and you can get like different types. Um, I ran out of one roll, I bought another roll. So the first roll looked like that. And this roll looks a little bit different as long as it's aluminium. And the idea with that is, it's not so much an insulator because of the density of it. It's, it, what it does is it reflects heat, so when the heat hits it, the idea is that it reflects it back into the room rather than it disappearing out of the building. So, yeah, if you're looking to uh, insulate your shed, so what I've done here, as you can see, I've cut each piece to size, and I've used staples because behind here you've got the wrap and then you've got the uh, the feather edge board, so the wood, so I've stapled it in, and I've gone through all the sections, as you can see. It's quite, this is quite a big shed, this is a 16 by 8 so it did take a while. Um, what else do you want to do, just before I forget, for ventilation, so in the floor, of, um, underneath the floor there's a layer of uh, damp proof course which stops any heat rising from under the floor up through the building and hitting the roof and then condensing on the roof. So I've eliminated that issue but you'll also get an issue if You've got, say, like over a warm day, or which follows on like to a cold night, or you've got heating on in here. I've got a little heater at the moment. So the issue you'll get is that you'll get condensation building up because it's the heat inside the building is actually hitting the roof and condensing. So what you want is, so if you've got a warm building, during the evening, you need some kind of a vent. So I've got a trickle vent in here. So this is just a big Perspex window. And I put this trickle vent in uh, you can buy these really cheap on online, Amazon, eBay. Uh, this is a 40 centimetre one, and I've just drilled a series of holes in the window. I've attached this, and then I've siliconed around it. So at night, open up vents and just let some of the heat get out of the building, let it escape, so that you don't get too much condensation on the roof. Uh, another way to stop the condensation build up on the roof is uh, to insulate the roof. So again, a, the wrap is on the roof, and I've started to use the, uh, the bubble wrap see you can see two different types there it doesn't matter um, on the roof so in theory the, the this part of the roof will not be as cold as what's behind it so it will reduce the uh, amount of condensation so what you can do is after you've done this and you can use other things you can use um, different types of insulation or loft insulation um, all, all different things but this seems to be the cheapest and easiest way I would say and you can cut it, as I say, you can cut it to size neatly, scissors and a uh, Stanley knife. And then I've used, just to give it a bit of a stick, I've used some instant nails, which you can, you can get anywhere. So, so, yeah, I've done all the sections. I'm going to carry on finishing the roof. And then I've got my little heater here. This little thing, and uh, it's got a little thermostat on it, a ceramic heater and that's just pumping out heat now so that it's uh, quite manageable in here so in the winter time if you're working in a, in a workshop you need heat you need light you know and you need a bit of soundproofing as well 
So I've got I've got my light set up here. This was just a cheap light that I got from a boot sale. It cost 50 pence, and I just put the bulbs in and I made a little mantle for it. Sat it on the roof. As I say, uh, I've got a video on how I built this workshop if you want to check that out. So that's how I've done it. So I could go on now to board this over with sort of some plywood. Um, I've used two by threes CLS timber in here. So even if you've got like one by one, not really thin wood, so like you've got a budget shed or just a shed you've bought pre-built, it doesn't matter because the thickness of this stuff is only like a centimetre or less, so it will fit in neatly and you can still board it over. So like you can imagine I could put another layer in there, I could put some soundproofing, whatever. But the idea is, like I say, the heat will hit it and instead of it condensing on the cold surface, it should just reflect back. Same with the ceiling, it will hit the ceiling and reflect back down again. That's the theory. Uh, so it's only November now, so I'm not sure how effective this is. But I'm pretty sure that if you didn't wrap it and it was just a wooden building, you know, it would be pretty, pretty cold. And I think the main issue with, with workshops in the winter time it's not so much the cold, it's the condensation. You don't want condensation on, I've got a laptop in here. I don't want my equipment getting damaged with, with uh, um, rust. So there's the two issues that you've got to tackle. So the floor, like I say, what I've done is I've lined it underneath. So I've used, um, just turn the camera around so I can show you. I've used old pallet wood. This is all pallet wood. It's solid and then I've sealed all the gaps in. I've put it to size and there's a, there's a framework underneath. And as I say, there's a, a damp proof course, like what you'd use if, if you was if you was building a garage or a house. And uh, so there's no way that any moisture can come up through this floor. So that's sorted. Uh, and then I've got another thing that you need to think about if you want to keep your shed warm is that you need to seal up all the gaps. So that what I've done is um, I've wrapped it and, and sealed it with the tape so that there's no air gaps. And then if there is any little gaps, like say here where the frame meets two parts of the frame, I've just put some sealant down there. And then I've got a double glazed door, which is much better insulated than a wooden door. Um, and uh, But even better, you know, plastic doesn't expand and contract like wood, so you don't get gaps where the, the, the cold's getting in. So it's a bit like a house. Yeah, so uh, I've, bought, I've built this on the cheap. Uh, it's got a double glazed, used double glazed door. There was a letter box, I've just filled that over and I've put some insulation inside there. Uh, that was about £25, really cheap. And then uh, I found, I've got a whiteboard there that I found thrown out. Uh, and then I've got, like I said, this is all CLS stud work. It's about two or three pound a piece. Um, all the windows are recycled. That was in a skip, that one. Um, they're all cut, that one's corrugated. Uh, this one was in a bus stop. That is a big window, it's like four foot by three foot, I think. And I've frosted it so that nobody can see in because you don't want people checking out what you've got in here, snooping around. And then, uh, like, like I say, everything I've just made, like um, there's this like, little mantle here where I've got a handle and it goes down just to protect the building from getting damaged. I've just made a little plate. Um, so you don't have to, you know, you don't have to spend a lot of money. This is probably 10, 20 pound a roll you get quite a big roll for that. So all in all, I'll probably finish doing the whole building for about 50, 60 pounds maybe max, which is not bad because as I say, it's an eight by 16 building. So there's quite a lot of space in here. Again, this is another double glazed window that I got on eBay for about eight pounds. And then I've got, I've made a frame for it with some pallet wood. I wouldn't recommend that because pallet wood is not usually that straight, but this stuff was quite straight. So it worked quite well. But um, back on the subject of um, of the uh, the insulation, yeah, try it for yourself. It's 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 pretty good. Like I say, I've got no air gaps, so any wind coming in, cooling the the temperature down, that can't really happen. And then my little trickle vent, I'll have that closed in the day, and then at night, let the heat out to stop condensation. Um, the ceiling. It's done, I could board the ceiling up as well if I wanted to, over them rafters, I probably won't, because it's just a workshop. Um, that is about it, so thank you for watching, I hope that's helped if you're thinking of uh, insulating your shed or even building a shed, please check out my other video on how I built the shed. Uh, thank you for watching as always. I'll just go back to my, my face, hold on a sec. Uh, thank you for watching as always. Uh, please remember to subscribe and like this video. And uh, I'll see you on the next one.